Hello and welcome to another tutorial. We are going to continue our discussion on how to install Java Development Kit and install IDEs by asking uh, ChatGPT to tell us how to do it. So previously we saw how to download and install JDK. We saw some very interesting information that ChatGPT provided us, especially about uh, uh, setting up Java environment variables like Java home adding them to path environment variable on Mac OS Now let's try to understand how to install Eclipse. So I'm gonna go ahead to my browser. Here's a chat GPT session and uh, <clears throat> Let's ask uh, tell me how to download uh, and install Eclipse IDE to download and install Eclipse ID, follow these steps. Go to Eclipse website, eclipse.org downloads, and click on the downloads button for the latest version of the Eclipse of the ID for your operating system. Once the download is complete, open the downloaded file and follow the instructions to install Eclipse. So, I mean, typically what happens here is that you download an installer and then uh, you run the installer for your operating system and it grabs and downloads the version of the uh um essentially uh eclipse id right but you can all also download a, a standalone application so after the installation is complete launch eclipse by double clicking on eclipse icon when eclipse starts you will be prompted to select a workspace so workspace is another concept which is uh, uh is uh, inside eclipse ide and that's essentially where you save all your projects. So you select a folder or a directory on your operating system as your workspace. Any new project that you create in Eclipse ID, which is managed by the Eclipse ID, then it's stored uh, inside the workspace. This is the location where your projects will be stored. Select a location and click OK to proceed. Eclipse will now open and you can start creating your first Java project. Note, Eclipse is a Java-based application, so you will need to have a Java development kit installed on your system to be able to run Eclipse. No, 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 this is not correct anymore. In the most recent versions of the Eclipse ID, it actually comes with a open J9, uh, essentially Java runtime. So it has a fully integrated uh, Java runtime inside Eclipse ID. You don't need to have separately install a JDK, right? It comes fully prepared with a JDK essentially, and you don't need to install anything. It just, you download Eclipse IDE. If you use Eclipse Builder for your Java projects, you can immediately compile Java codes and run them. You don't need any external JDK, but obviously if you are a Java developer, <clears throat> You would want to also download different JDKs and explore with them. Last time we saw that uh, 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 in macOS li library Java, Java virtual machines. And uh, you see I've installed lots of different JDKs. And I will show you how to actually point Eclipse IDE to use any of this JDK. Because when you download and install Eclipse IDE, by default, it uses its own internal JDK, right? But maybe that's a different version of the JDK. You want to really use a specific version of the JDK so you can uh, configure Eclipse ID to point to any JDK that you've installed. So let's open this link, eclipse.org downloads. So here, uh, if you download this, uh, obviously now the versions for the ARM are also available. If you're using uh, Linux on ARM or Mac OS on M1 or M2 chips, now they have fully migrated to ARM. So ARM uh, architecture is also available. Um, my computer is Intel, so x86-64, but I do not want to uh, uh, download the installer. I mean, that's a recommended way, but I usually just go to packages. These are pre-configured uh, uh, bundles of Eclipse ID. So Eclipse has a core, but then uh, it has lots of plugins. So Eclipse is like a <coughs> modular uh, platform for developing. So you can have a Eclipse ID, which comes with the Java development bundle, which means it has the uh, um, Essentially, it has the uh, Java perspective fully installed and configured. It also comes with extra other tools that are relevant. For example, uh, uh, Git client, so internal Git, which is very actually very nice to use uh, Git uh, client inside Eclipse ID, XML editor, Maven, integration of Maven and Gradle is also essential. 
and then you can also for example if you want to do C C++ development with Eclipse um, you can download this one so it already has the perspective for C C++ development it doesn't mean that if you install this uh, you cannot do Java development you can in fact m sometimes if you're an advanced Java developer, you want to do mixed Java C++ development using Java native interface. If you're not familiar with it, I have, a, I have more than 50 hours of lectures about Java native in, uh, interface and how to do a mixed uh, Java and C++ development. So what this means is that when you download this one, the C++ perspective and all the plugins are configured, but you can go to Eclipse Marketplace and install Java plugin, for example, right? And then uh, obviously these days there's also a Python uh, plugin for Eclipse, which they don't typically list it here, but uh, PyDev is also a very nice um, way of doing, uh, like writing Python using Eclipse ID, I recommend that. And uh, <clears throat> the other thing is that, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, another thing is that uh, if you, like one nice thing about the modularity of Eclipse ID is that, for example, if you download Java for Java developer or C++ developer, in both cases, you use the same Git interface inside Eclipse ID, which is very nice, right? So um, both for C++ or Java, regardless of which one, you always need a Git client, right? So it's very nice to have that. And there are also lots of other plugins that are independent of which programming language you're doing, right? It's more like file management, git uh, version control um, source code sharing this kind of stuff so so you can just uh, select um, windows mac os and linux there is no uh, arm uh, binary for windows at the moment but mac os and linux there is a arm architecture as well right i'm not going to download it because i have already downloaded downloaded it uh, i can just uh, show you the view here and right now i'm in the java perspective here I have also installed C++ perspective to write C++ code and so I also have installed Python perspective which is called PyDev and I have already configured it so that it points to the version of the Python interpreter that I have installed. So back to the Java <clears throat> and this is, uh, I have already set up my workspace and it typically shows the workspace here so it's called uh, some directory. And then uh, <clears throat> these are some windows in Eclipse ID. They, these are called views, these tabs. Every tab is called a view. And it's fully configurable. You can close a tab. You can drag and dra uh, drag and put them someplace else. It's, it's very uh, uh, customizable, which is a nice thing to have. And then, <clears throat> so we have workspace. We have a perspective like Java. Within the perspective, we have views or tabs or windows, whatever you want to call them. And you can also detach them. For example, now this becomes a separate window, right? But then I can also uh, uh, close it or drag it back. So it's a very flexible thing. And there's this window option and perspective, open perspective. So if you, we look at all the perspective I have installed C++, Git is com comes by default debug perspective for Java. Java is the default Java browsing. And a perspective is just a collection of views, uh, PyDev, for example, team synchronizing, resource, etc. right? So C++, Java, and PyDev, these are the three ones that I mainly use. Git is also important, and it's very nice that Eclipse comes with a built-in Git client, which really makes life easy. <clears throat> and uh, again, a perspective is just a collection of views. And the other nice thing is that once you select a perspective, all the menus uh, automatically change. For example, when I'm in Java perspective, if I go to file menu and say new, it says Java project, package, class, interface, enum, record. These are all Java stuff, right? Now, if I switch to C++ perspective, suddenly all the uh, menus change to accommodate C++ development, make file project, C++ project, source, source file, header file. And if I switch to Python perspective, you see it becomes PyDev project, package, PyDev package, Python module, folder, file, etc. So it's e extremely flexible. And this is one of the very best things that I love about Eclipse IDE. That's why I'm kind of always uh, sucked into Eclipse IDE because really switching between different uh, programming language, especially especially if you're doing mixed development is, is really, it cannot be any more easier than using Eclipse IDE. It's extremely easy. If you doubt me, go watch my lectures on Java native interface, how to do mixed Java C++ development. 
I have more than 50 hours of lectures and at some point in the future I will do a mix Python C++ uh, development as well how to call native methods in C++ from Python etc so please stay tuned uh, those will be very good and again if you are doing mixed development you have to use Eclipse ID that's highly recommended and you install three different perspective Java C++ Python you immediately jump between them it cannot be any easier than that all right so back to our uh, um, PowerPoint so where to download Eclipse ID we asked chat GPT and it gave us the answer how to install Eclipse ID it already gave us the answer uh, going back here and then uh, we already downloaded Java so if you um, let's say how to configure Eclipse IDE to uh, to use one of my uh, installed uh, JDKs let's say uh, all right so we lost connection let's refresh this all right so um, how to configure Eclipse IDE to use one of my installed JDKs on Mac OS let's say Mac OS let's be specific about the operating system to configure Eclipse to use a specific JDK on Mac OS open Eclipse and click on Eclipse top menu click on preferences in the drop down menu uh, remember this we are specific about Mac OS because the menus the organization of menus between Windows Mac OS and Linux could be a little bit different so it's when you're asking this kind of stuff it's best to be specific about the operating system click on the add button in there so we want to go to preferences expand the Java folder and install JREs in the JRE definition window that appears select a standard VM and click next in the JRE home field click on the directory button and browse to the location JDK installed by default we've seen this before on the Mac OS JDKs are installed on library Java Java virtual machines whatever JDK you have and then contents home that's the Java home click finish to add JDK to the list of installed JRE select the JDK you just added and apply this sets the JDK for the entire workspace all the projects but then you can selectively change the JDK or JRE for a particular um, project after following these steps, Eclipse should be configured to use the specific JDK when building and running Java projects. So let's go to Eclipse IDE. We go to Eclipse on Mac OS, uh, click Preferences, and uh, here under the Java, Install JREs. I've already searched for all of them, but what you can do instead of add, just say Search. And then uh, point it to Java Library Java, Java Virtual Machine, Open. I just recently, for example, installed the uh, JDK 19. So 17, uh, 18, so 15, 16, 11, Graal VM 22.1, uh, 11, 13, 02. So these are essentially duplicates. So uh, let's, uh, we can uh, remove these 14. 1402 uh, we can also remove this so we have uh, 13 14 15 16 17 18 this was uh, uh, open JDK so we can also add this a standard VM and then a directory we want to go to JDK 19 contents home and then it automatically the GRE system uh, uh, recognizes that GRE we can say uh, Java SE 19 for example SE means it's from Oracle you can also name it whatever you want if you want to be specific it already uh, points to all the uh, lib uh, JR Java runtime which are the modular ones and then you can also specific uh, specify VM arguments um, if you want your uh, essentially when whenever you run a Java application with this uh, Java runtime um, you can specify uh, VM arguments for now I leave it blank but then you can also specify that so let's finish this now J and then if I select one of these um, and then uh, uh, let's see edit duplicate search apply this becomes the default right right now Java 19 becomes the default so apply and close so if I select a Java project let's say test here you can select uh, um, Java SE 18 the reason that I cannot go uh, uh, we can use a project a specific JRE which is Java SE 19 
and then uh, uh, let's uh, and then uh, say finish. So we created a Java project. You see there is a J but a J annotation here, which means it's a Java project. And JRE system library is Java SC19. It already points to where it is. Library Java Java Virtual Machine JDK19. Everything looks good. We can quickly test that our JDK and Eclipse is set up. So let's create a class. Uh, test one within a test package, public static void main. All right, it all looks good. And then we do a quick sysout. Uh, hello world. All right. And then run this. So when you run it, obviously, as soon as you hit save on any Java file, Eclipse compiles it and puts it in the bin directory. You don't see the bin directory in the package explorer, but in the navigator, you can go to the test. You see we have dot settings, which means it's a Eclipse a specific project or it's a project that's managed by Eclipse. Bin is where all the class files are stored, test1.class. This is when the Eclipse compiles this. And you can also install a decompiler for class files so that you can decompile and see their contents. I have already installed this. I will show you in the next lecture how to do it, but I can open it with a class decompiler or class file viewer. Class file viewer doesn't show decompile it. Instead, it shows the binary content of the class file as a strings right so the class file if you're not familiar with it it's just a binary it's a compact version of all the comments um and then uh, modifiers all these are written in ascii binary format and then uh, um yeah this is exactly where it, what's written in the class file when you decompile it or look uh, at the a string version some of the things are hidden like uh, um, constant pool this kind of stuff um, so I hope you enjoyed this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to also do one more thing and that's uh, Maven. So Maven is also a very popular Bell tool. When you use Maven, it means maybe you don't want Eclipse ID to manage your Java projects. You just want to use the development in Eclipse ID, but you want to build your um, project with Maven. Now Eclipse has a very nice Maven plugin. So Maven can be fully integrated in Eclipse ID. <clears throat> And uh, just one thing to note that right now, even though we are using a JRE system library, this is only used uh, for running the Java application. It's not used uh, for um, compiling. So Eclipse uses its own internal compiler. It doesn't use the compiler that comes with, uh, um, with uh, JDK. So just be very careful. Eclipse ID uses its own internal internal compiler i want to be very clear about this and if you want to change this to use the java java c compiler so this is not java c the reason is that they obviously added lots of more features for like syntax highlighting or error codes for example uh, if i do this it uh, the eclipse uh, compiler immediately tells you where the error is and uh, how to fix it for example it also gives you suggestions so if i click on this uh yeah it can give us suggestion or maybe i believe it's command one no suggestions available so obviously this is just a compilation error so i hope you enjoyed this lecture please stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one